end, the, you know, the bill really does seem to be arrayed against teachers and not, you know, not a, an interest in, in serving the overall system or bringing tension down. It presumes that the bad actors are, are teachers by its construction. Um, you know, I don't know if I would support uh, classifying teachers uh, essential employees um, or not, but certainly the, uh, the essential employees and, and their ability to petition into interest-based bargaining. We heard the uh, we heard the uh, testimony from District 196. By the way, shout out. That's uh, my alma mater, District 196. What year was um, that? Long <laughs> uh, um, Sorry to say. Um, uh, at least brings the parties to the table on a, on a, on a equal footing. Um, this clearly just simply cuts directly against the rights of teachers to their currently existing collective bargaining rights. And that's why we heard from the characterization earlier, which I won't use. But that's what it feels like. You know, it feels like it's the whole construction and thrust of the bill. The testimony that we heard from Mr. Kite presumes teachers to be bad faith actors in this negotiation, not allowing the negotiation to occur around the calendar in a normal fashion, a professional fashion, presuming that uh, teachers are going to be so <coughs> disheartened by the progress of negotiations that they're going to behave poorly in the classroom and that <coughs> So that's what this bill feels like. If it were perhaps in a different construction, <coughs> the type which Mr. Bonner just described, maybe, um, you know, uh, I could open the door a crack and consider uh, the reform possibility of this kind of reform. 